Folks, it's the ultimate showdown of the year. Forget about boxing or the UFC, this year's main event is going to be an epic one. I mean, we'll get to see two giants square off to claim bragging rights as the top dog in the arena, and we love it. That's right, folks, this is the one that you've all been waiting for. In the green corner, we've got the undisputed champion, the dominator themselves, NVIDIA with their upcoming RTX 4090. And in the red corner, we've got our challenger, reborn and ready to go, AMD, with a ready on RX 7900 XT. So, ladies and gentlemen, get your popcorn ready because in the next eight minutes, we're gonna be taking you through one hell of a roller coaster battle between the most highly anticipated green Goliath, the NVIDIA RTX 4090, versus the big red machine, the AMD RX 7900 XT. Are you ready? Then let's get into it. The Architecture. So just like every other showdown, we're gonna be starting off with the fundamentals. In terms of architecture, NVIDIA is reinventing itself with the new ADA Loveless AD102 for its RTX 4090 GPU, which is set to pack the heat in the promising departments. I mean, they're reportedly moving up from the RTX 3090's 10,752 cores to get this, 18,432 cores. Now that's a whole lot of juice right there. But AMD is not playing around either this year. In fact, they're adding a new architecture as well to their upcoming RX 7900 XT, which is guaranteed to pack a hell of a punch. Yep, the RX 7900 is coming with the highly anticipated RDNA 3 architecture, which will see a monumental shift from the RX 6900's 5120 cores to a mind-blowing 15,360 cores. That's pretty impressive if you ask me, but not enough to beat the RTX 4090 in terms of core count. Although, to be honest, we're talking pretty slim margins here, so maybe it won't be noticeable in terms of gaming performance, but who knows. Both Nvidia and AMD are planning a massive shift in their respective chip designs this year. Nvidia is saying goodbye to their Samsung design, an 8 nanometer chip, and now introducing the much sleeker 5 nanometer processor designed by TSMC. AMD is also going in that same direction, ditching the 7 nanometer processor to adapt a 5 nanometer or 6 nanometer processor designed by the same company as well. What can we say? It looks like it's going to be a profitable year for TSMC. As for the chip's individual memory boosting capacities, Nvidia's ADA Loveless AD102 is going to come with the super powered 384 bit 24 gigabyte GDDR6X V RAM for enhanced performance. But AMD is also bringing the heat this year by enhancing the RX 7900's memory. For starters, they're borrowing a leaf from their Ryzen CPUs and implementing a next-level chipset design so as to ensure faster processing speeds. But hey, we're just scratching the surface here. Perhaps embarrassed by their abysmal performance going head-to-head -head with Nvidia last year, they're bringing some crazy memory power to the table. I mean, a 256-bit, 32-gigabyte GDDR6 VRAM is supposedly in the works. And look, I know you might be wondering to yourself, well, yeah, but Nvidia still has a bigger bus. Well, considering the major differences in their previous GPUs, I can see that AMD isn't playing around this time. You see, what had ended up happening last year is that NVIDIA's RTX 3090 was introduced into the market with 24 gigabytes and GDDR6X VRAM, compared to AMD's RX 6900 that only came with 16 gigabytes and GDDR6 VRAM. It's pretty clear that an 8 gigabyte VRAM difference was noticeable, especially whenever running next gen games which is why I'm happy to see that AMD has surpassed NVIDIA in VRAM memory. Well, it's maybe not so special, but hey, it's something they got going for them, right? Now, closing this chapter on specifications and architecture, we've got to look at the clock speeds. And boy, oh boy, do we have to say that the RTX 4090 and RX 7900 XT aren't messing around. NVIDIA's new architecture on the 4090 is expected to boost clock speeds of up to 2.5 gigahertz with 92 teraflops of computing power. As we mentioned earlier in the NVIDIA RTX 40 series review, this means that NVIDIA's upcoming GPU would be able to handle, get this, 92 trillion floating point calculations 
per second. As for AMD, they're going mad this year with clock speeds as well. The major shift is bumping up from the RDNA 2 to the RDNA 3 architecture, which is expected to boost clock speeds of up to 2.8 gigahertz. But guys, I am just gonna keep it real with you here. Nvidia completely obliterates AMD when it comes to teraflops. I mean, there is just no way that you can compare the 32 teraflops of computing power that the RX 7900 has and try to line that up with the 92 teraflops of power that the RTX 4090 has. I mean, that's triple the calculations, which brings us to performance. Now, there is a massive revolution going on with the GPUs right now. Companies such as AMD and Nvidia, along with Intel, are transitioning their GPUs from practical gaming components to more like all-purpose graphics cards. I mean, with the digital revolution like the metaverse and omniverse now expanding, it's kind of easy to see why, and they all want a slice of that pie. But hey, it's consumers. So look, we're not complaining, it's how the market works. Wouldn't you want your GPU to be powerful enough to render everything from next-gen games to even virtual reality? There's really no point in spending a fortune on another GPU to do two totally separate things, which is why factors like clock speed, memory, and even processing power are all battlegrounds for AMD and Nvidia alike. So it's no surprise that in terms of flexibility as well as performance, Nvidia is looking to market the RTX 4090 as the ultimate all-purpose GPU for being able to render everything from games to audio files and videos. Plus, if Nvidia does deliver on these specs as promised, then we could see major performance boosts of up to 150% compared to its predecessor at the RTX 3090. As for AMD, the jump is going at warp speed as well. The upgrade in architecture, a major increase in memory, as well as tripling of the number of cores could see a mind-blowing 200% increase in performance between the RX 7900 and the RX 6900. And let's not forget that they're looking to enhance ray tracing as their major selling point this year. So, who wins? The major question now comes into play. Who's gonna outperform? The RTX 4090? or the RX 7900? Well, it looks like it's gonna be a pretty close race, so we can't really call it a win or a loser deal right now in this fight, since both graphics cards have yet to even be released. Once they're launched, a thorough benchmark of upcoming games is the only way that we're gonna know who edges out on top. But hey, we're not done yet. Of course, with such high-powered specifications featured on both the RTX 4090 and the RX 7900, they're gonna consume a whole lot of power. Look, I am not gonna sugarcoat anything out here. The RTX 4090 is expected to consume a staggering 1,200 watts of power, so get prepared for an outrageous electric bill if you're planning on banking with the 4090. As for the RX 7900, it is expected to draw 500 watts of power, which is way better than the 4090, but still could cause a massive dent in your power bill. In terms of longevity, we do feel that the 3090 will perform much better than the 7900, that is, if we're looking at upcoming releases in the next three years. That being said, the 7090 is still a pretty solid graphics card for high-level gaming anyway. Our verdict? Well, we're kind of on the fence about it because, listen, while NVIDIA does look to slightly edge out AMD in terms of performance and capabilities, we just know they're going to slap an insane price on it, such as $2,500 for the RTX 4090. And that's even considering that the 3090 Ti right now is still going for $2,000 on the official website. Plus, with the insane electric bill, you'll be spending a fortune on gaming. On the other hand, the RX 7900 will probably retail somewhere in the ballpark of $1,000 to $1,500, so you might just get to save $1,000 in the end. And let's not forget that this 500 watt rating does mean a significantly cheaper electric bill in the end when comparing it to the 4090. All in all, our specifications and disappointments will end up being answered in September 2022 because both GPUs are expected to be released in the next five months. For now, let's get to saving that money because in all honesty, guys, we're gonna be breaking the bank with either one of these. And with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing to the channel, ding that notification bell so you don't miss out on any more content updates from us, and please give us a huge thumbs up if you did find this video informative and without a decide. Until next time, folks, stay safe and stay informed.